Hello YouTube. Uh, today I am really excited to be making a video on this. This is a probably late 20s, early 30s ill Type W. It's a 30 inch. Uh, this fan I just picked up. It was uh, had to take a trip up to New York to go get it. New York State, that is. Um, and this thing was, this was from up in the mountains, so it was a pretty fun drive up there. Uh, a lot of cool scenery. And the house that this came out of, I didn't actually go to the house, uh, but the, the guy who was selling the fan, he uh, works in the HVAC industry, and he, uh, he had gone to the house and installed air conditioning. It was an old house that was built in 1770. So, 252 year old house, that's pretty cool, you know. Uh, so he installed the AC there. This fan was actually being used right up until then uh, as kind of like the whole house fan, I'm assuming. You know, I think it was mounted up in the attic and uh, that was what they used to cool it for the past 90 years, give or take. And the, uh, he took the fan down and you know, couldn't bear to just scrap it or get rid of it, so put it up for sale and fortunately I was able to buy it. Um, and this is just, it's really cool for me. I've always wanted to get a 30W because for me, the 30W, it's the, I like to say it's the smallest of the bigger size W fans for ill. You know, this is the first size that you had the eight blade configuration instead of the six. You have the multi piece frame that bolts together versus having one cast frame. I'm not sure. I believe the 24s might have also had that uh, bolt together configuration. I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, you know, it's cool to me. My other. Type W is all one piece frame, so this is a little bit different step up. You've got the little tether chain that prevents the, the uh, motor cover from falling to the ground when it's removed for service. And I'm trying to think what else there is. Well, everything here is pretty much you know standard issue for a Type W fan. The bearings on this fan are excellent. I don't, I'm not sure that they're 100% original from the factory. I would assume so since you know, these fans are pretty hardy and they last a long time. But you give it a spin and the thing just keeps on going. I did a test where I spun the fan by hand like I just did. I think I might have pushed it a little bit faster. And it kept spinning for about three minutes uh, after that. So it's definitely got some good bearings in it. Uh, one really cool thing with this, now this is a three-phase motor, but this has the original ILG static phase converter with it, which is essentially just a giant run capacitor. Uh, I haven't checked to see what microfarad it is, but this thing is definitely heavy, so I will have to take a look at that. But... Um, so, you know, that kind of stuff is really cool to me. I like seeing that. And I'm sure because of the way this fan was being used in a residential application, that's why they had the static phase converter. Now, if it was used in an industrial setting where you have three-phase power, you wouldn't have any need for that. So I'm sure that it's probably less common to find those than finding fans like this without them. Now... I'm going to go ahead and take the motor dome off. This, uh, I always find it fascinating seeing how they changed their emblem through the years. This one has, it says, you know, ILG across the center like they all do. It says trade and then mark underneath, even though you probably can't really see where it says mark. And then it says high efficiency ventilating. And right here it should say machinery, but it's kind of gotten scraped off. Um. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool, and remarkably, this has no dents or dings or anything in it. I'm just amazed. It really is a clean motor dome. I'll make sure both of these screws are loosened up here. 
and I'm going to take this off and you'll see something else that I really like with these fans is the older open frame motors like this. I have two other motors that are like this on my Il B series universal blowers and um, you know, it's cool to have one of these on a Type W. I can't wait to see this thing run. I still have not run it. I literally just got it home a couple hours ago and uh, you know, I've just been kind of looking at it, inspecting it, taking some pictures. I always, <laughs> I get so excited when I do some of these projects that I forget to document the whole thing and I end up getting halfway into it and things all apart and pieces everywhere and then I realize, oh, I forgot to take any pictures of the way that it looked beforehand. So I wanted to make sure I got some pictures of it covered in its nice dusty filth, <laughs> you know, whatever, years of years of dust and whatever going through the air through this thing. Um, it appears the paint underneath is actually pretty good, but we'll see. I'll find out as I take it apart and clean it. But, um, but yeah, this motor is pretty cool. Uh, you know, you'll hear, <laughs> I've asked a few people this. I say, oh, did you ever hear of 110 volt three phase? And I said, there's no such thing as that. Well, for this motor there is. Uh, <laughs> I think the reason that you'll see these ILG fans, really that's the only place I've ever seen it, seen a motor that said 110 volt three phase. There may be a couple other applications out there I'm not aware of, but um, you know, yeah, you wouldn't see 110 volt three phase being supplied to a building or being used in a building. Yeah, you know, back in this time it would have been 220 volt or 440 volt three phase would have been common, but um, this particular motor on the tag it says 110 volt. It's only a quarter horsepower, which I'm surprised. Being a 30 inch ill, usually the 30 inchers, I want to say, you know, they might be like three eighths horsepower or something like that. They're a little bit more than a quarter. Um, but no, this one's a quarter horsepower, which is what the 24 inch fans usually used. But it's a slow turner. It's 570 RPM. So that would make this a 12 pole. You know, we're looking at 12 pole motor would be 600 RPM. These fans generally have around a 5% slip. So you're looking at 570. And um, what else? Frame 101, this is actually the same frame motor that my B25 blower has. You could actually take this out of this and put it in the B25 and uh, vice versa. You could switch the other one out. The amp draw or the amp rating on this motor is 3 amps and 60 cycles of course. So it's pretty neat. Now the top of these motors, you know, this one's rated at 110 volts. The blower motors that I have are rated for 220 volts, three phase, but the way they were wired when I got them, you know, it looked like all the original wiring. They were originally wired so that they were in star or Y configuration, um, and they're 220 volt. This one is wired in delta, and it says 110 volt. Well, the interesting thing is, is you can wire either of these motors for either voltage. If I wired this in star, I could run this at 220 volts. Uh, or the other way around, if I took the blowers and wired them in delta, I could run them at 110 volts. Um, obviously, you know, that's old terminology these days, you know, 120 volts is usually the standard. And uh, the house that I'm in, it's more like 125 and 250 roughly uh, but on the top of the on the top of these motors cast into the actual housing of the stator it actually has numbers punched in there and it says 110 and 220 so uh, that's why I was able to I figured that out with the blowers I said oh I see so I guess even though it just says 220 on those tags you can also wire it and configure it to work on 110 just like this fan so I may I may try rewiring this in uh, star and hooking it up to my phase converter and seeing what that does with it but 
we'll see. For now, I'm just going to keep everything the way that it is, and uh, I'll wire it back up with the static phase converter and see how it works like that. I'll make a video of it so you'll be able to see it running. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to make a video very soon like that because I really shouldn't have to do anything. The wires, even though they're very old, as long as I don't bend these all around, uh, I don't see... I don't see any cracks or anything bad with the insulation so as long as I test it out and I'm not getting any kind of shorts or uh, issues with you know I want to make sure all the resistance is the same between windings and everything um, it should be good I should be able to hook this up and, and run it with no problems so uh, hopefully that will be the next thing in order for this and then I'll probably start to disassemble the fan. The one thing I don't know, I kind of haven't gotten to take a look at it yet, is I'm not sure the shaft size or if it's a keyed or a flat uh, shaft with a flat cut on it. I don't know. Uh, find that out, I guess, as I go. But it's just a really cool piece. Uh, I feel just so happy to have it. Uh, and I'm probably going to end up making some kind of a stand for this fan so that I can be able to wheel it around easily and use it. Uh, right now it's not very mobile, <laughs> not easy to lift. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm just really excited about this. Uh, when I first saw it, I was just, I could not believe it. I said, oh my gosh, this is the one. This is what I've been looking for for a while. And, um, it's just the next step bigger this is right now this is the biggest one I have I know there's other collectors out there that uh, definitely have some much bigger ones uh, you know got them with 48 inches and stuff that's that's a big big heavy fan material right there but um, for me though this is this is definitely I should say big enough I mean for what I'm gonna need and what I'm gonna use that's it's probably more than I need but uh, I just, as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it, and I just had to have it. And I'll get this thing cleaned up, and it'll be a nice runner. So, if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.